Hey, hey, everybody. Alex with you here as usual. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess video. Always great to see you guys. In today's video, well, actually, I wanted to make it a short, but I felt like I've had a little bit more information to share with you guys, so a short might not be enough time for me. Um, and short videos tend to attract weird audience. It's weird. Anyways, long story short. I've had a comment on one of my shorts where um, the one that I did about the cracking of the of the chess pieces and somebody commented saying that had I had any experience with warping of chess boards. So I wanted to address that as basically kind of a way to open up a discussion for people to share their experiences and their thoughts on warping of chess boards. I'm going to start off by saying that warping of chessboards is probably going to be something more or less that you would notice with wooden chessboards as opposed to like marble, metal, plastic. I mean, I'm sure that possibly there's a, a situation in which a plastic chessboard, if there are plastic chessboards out there, could warp over time. But basically, for those of you guys that are not aware, a piece of wood cut off the tree and shaped into a particular shape. Uh, the inside of the wood over time, uh, based on differences in humidity and the overall dryness of the wood, it could start to shrink. And so what it does is that when it starts to shrink, it could start to deform a little bit and kind of bend inwards uh, as it's sort of as it's shrinking. What it's doing is it's kind of pulling on itself and it's changing its own dimensions. It's sort of like if you guys want to see a prime example of warping of wood, find some wooden fences somewhere that are not necessarily new that have been made out of basically cut wood not composite wood but cut wood and look closely that between the edges you might see that there will be a little bit of a depression of the wood that will that will sort of uh, uh, concave a little bit inwards Certainly that could be an issue on a chessboard. If you start to notice that your chessboard is basically kind of rising up on the sides and it's changing that flat surface that you would expect out of a chessboard, it could be an issue. I've had most of my boards over two years and uh, I wouldn't say I necessarily take great care of them. They just sit in my closet upstairs. The temperature there doesn't change a whole lot, neither does humidity. However, they're just standing there in the corner, kind of stacked against each other just because my wife told me to find a good spot for them, and I did, okay? I'm not sitting there putting them in special humidity-controlled boxes or anything like that, so I just wanted to let you know that I'm not really taking special care on my chess boards, and what I'm about to say basically comes from my experience of using the boards the way that mostly everybody else would use. You just store it somewhere, and when it's time to take it out to play, you take it out to play, okay? So, no, I have not necessarily noticed any warping of my boards. That would be the short answer. However, I'm going to kind of expand on that and show you guys that not all wooden boards are actually made out of the same material. And I really don't want to drag this video out to how I used to drag my videos out because I do realize you guys have places to be and things to do. So. I'm going to start off with showing you guys the first board. All of these boards I've shown you guys before, but I'm going to kind of make this video more or less a reflective summary. And once again, something for you guys to talk about and share as far as your own experiences. This here is a relatively small and yet compact and lightweight chessboard that the video to which you will be able to find my very first video on this channel, this board came with the Library Grandmaster chess set that I purchased uh, over two years ago. I think it must have been already like three years ago because it's uh, I've, I've, I've used this board extensively. I find that the size of this board is really nice in situations where you want a compact wooden board and uh, you, you don't want it to be too heavy. So if, if you're, you know, if you have a child or somebody that's in maybe in elementary school, middle school, you want them to have the experience of having a wooden board and wooden pieces, something like this is a relatively nice board to have. It's also fitting on a lot of uh, like tables and stuff, so it, um, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I find this board to be useful. One of the biggest disadvantages about this board compared to some of my other boards is that for some reason, uh, I find that the pieces on this board feel to me too close together. And sometimes when I'm playing a game, it's a little bit straining on the eyes. It's hard to be able to technically relate that information to you. But take my word for it. I've played the games with the Library Grandmaster chess set on this board 
and perhaps it's due to the blending of the chess pieces to the board. I've talked about this before, or maybe the fact that the, the board is just a little, a little too close together that sometimes it's not that it ruins your games, but in my opinion, if I had to choose a board that's going to be like 1.75 square inch versus like a 2.25, I'd probably go with the 2.25. You get more space, you're able to see your games a little bit better, and somehow your brain interprets the, the games a little bit better too. That's the reason why the tournaments usually have it at 2.25. I might be wrong. Anyways, uh, back to this board. This is a, a composite wood, okay? Composite wood is kind of like, it's kind of like steak, which I just had for breakfast, uh, steak versus ground beef. Both of them are meat, so it's technically kind of similar, but uh, ground beef is basically the meat that's taken and ground up and then fused back together, and you can make a shape of a steak and cook it, and then you can eat it like meatloaf or something. So uh, it, they taste different, but it's still meat, still technically the same. Uh, composite wood's kind of like that. It's chippings of wood that have been basically, the, the wood has been processed, and then that, those chippings, they're, they're fused together. Uh, a lot of furniture nowadays is made out of composite wood. Uh, the advantages of using composite wood is that it's light. The wood that's being used is fused together with some kind of material that holds it together. So there's not as much wood, it's not as dense, and uh, it's, it's lightweight. Um, I feel like a lot of my composite boards are lightweight. And one of the advantages of a board like this, now I could be wrong, but when you have a wooden board that has a solid piece of wood, that solid piece of wood could theoretically start to dry and bend over time. And maybe for those of you guys out there that have solid wooden boards, maybe you have noticed that. Uh, composite wood, in my opinion, because of the fusion of it and all the little pieces are basically kind of just fused together like a burger, um, it, it could dry up over time. I assume that, you know, any wood could, but when it does dry up, I don't necessarily think it, 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 it sort of uh, acts together as a whole, like you would expect out of a normal piece of wood. And so as a result, I don't necessarily think that there's going to be the, the tension and the, the propensity towards bending that piece. Like I said, I could be wrong, but that's kind of the conclusion that I came to and I've read some forums and people have shared similar, uh, similar sort of outlooks on this. Um, there are some disadvantages to composite boards. First of all, well, it's going to be cheaper than solid wood as far as what I've seen. The way that this board is created is actually like, if you look at this board here, and I know it might be kind of hard to see because I'm not zooming in, but uh, you have these sort of uh, uh, little transitions, little diagonal lines over here. So you have this this part right over here on the bottom and this part on the side, those are going to be individual little composite wood planks that have been created and then they've been stained and the little letters and numbers have been sort of placed in there and then the stain has been laid over it. And once the, the, ever the stain has dried up, the numbers basically like little tapes or whatever. I'm not really sure exactly how it's made, but uh, because the underlying color of the wood, I think is light. And then the staining sort of brings about the alternative color that we see here, which is the brown color. But these little pieces on the sides are actually fused in together with the board. And so the board basically is made uh, with a combination of, of composite wood, a little bit of glue here and there, and then some, some dye. Some dye where it's necessary to create uh, you know alternative look to the pieces, okay? So it's light. A big disadvantage that I see is that if you do drop the board, uh, sometimes like it'll chip on the sides and when it does chip on the sides It'll reveal the composite wood that's inside and sometimes it can be kind of not very attractive If you have a solid wood board and it hits on the side or on the corner You could potentially chip a piece and that will look quite unattractive, but um, In a composite wood board situations. I've noticed that what it does is it sort of dents in it sort of like smushes the the wood in and It'll reveal the inside of that wood now I've had some of these chippings and mainly occur in the corners of these boards even when I don't mishandle them. So over time I feel like even with them being stored I don't really know what the issue is but I've noticed here there's a couple of areas where, where these little chippings are occurring. You could probably paint over it or restain it and then if you restain it with the same stain you'd probably be okay because then it wouldn't really be all that noticeable. But yeah, that's the biggest disadvantage. 
But I don't think that composite boards are going to be likely to warp. Once again, I could be contradicting myself. So please be sure if you have a different experience, share it in the comments below so people can read and kind of, uh, you know, put in their, their 10 cents. So yeah, that's that. Uh, nice board, relatively inexpensive. These things will probably retail somewhere between like uh, $70 to $100 for a relatively good board. You still get a great chess playing experience, especially if you have the pieces that'll come with it. And if you need the space or if you're trying to save space and you don't necessarily want to get a large, large board, something like this is a relatively compact, good way. That's why it's called Library Grandmaster Chess Set because assuming that the, the size overall of this chess set is that you could be playing it in a library on a small table and not really taking up half of the room like you would expect with the 2.25 board. But uh, I think overall a great, great board. Uh, I don't really have any, any bad things to say about this board. My second board, I think the video to which I've probably done within the first three videos that I've done um, was the Elm Burl Bird's Eye Maple Superior Traditional Chessboard from, you can get this from House of Staunton. I purchased mine on Amazon. It was uh, being sold used. I purchased it for 200. 2.2, 2.5 square inch boards, a really nice board. It's got a veneer finish on top. So it's got a really thin piece of wood basically that's overlaid and glued to the interior of the board. Interior is composite. Composite here inside of the board, uh, board made in Spain. It's not as heavy as it looks, okay? So I think it, once again, due to the fact that it's composite, it's not super heavy. It is really awkward. This board is, I've taken this board to my friend's house uh, numerous times, and I feel like it's a little bit awkward to carry because it's just so, so large and a 2.5 inch board with little side areas here it's just it's large okay but out of all the boards that i have this board gives me plenty of space to look around and really have an enjoyable game and you can really load up the largest pieces that you have on it at 4.4 or 4.5 with a really large base and you'd still be okay so this board is my sort of go-to for the luxurious chess pieces i've done this video many times before and I did it with the Paulson chess set which is one of my bigger chess sets. You can pretty much stack any type of chess pieces on it and you're good. It's got a really really nice smooth surface. Uh, composite wood once again. The back side of it I believe is also composite. It's made to look like a grained wood but I think just like in the Library Grandmaster chess board it's still composite. So they glue this backside to this overall, to the composite in, inside. So they glue this backside to make it look like wood. Made in Spain, um, really nice board overall. Not super heavy, but when I purchased it used, in three of the four corners, I have little dings that actually like the, this outside here is black. And so whenever it dings in, like whenever you drop it or whatever, and it smushes that wood inwards, it'll mess up the, the, the paint. And so it'll bring out that composite to the surface. And it really looks kind of unattractive. It looks like a beaten up board. I think that if you had a solid wood board, you probably wouldn't necessarily have those issues, but you have other issues. So, you know, you can't, no board is perfect. It's just that I'm kind of showing you guys did I notice any warping with this board? I've had this board for almost three years. I have not noticed any warping, any any issues, any surface sort of uh, changes on this board, nothing like that. Okay, so all of my boards, like I said, I haven't noticed any warping. Is it possible that boards warp? Yeah, uh, probably in some situations. I don't know whether or not you really have to keep them in, in really uh, strange conditions like if it's really cold or hot constantly maybe potentially like just like any wood would change but uh, in my case no not not so far finally I've got my 2.25 board that I actually also purchased from uh, I believe uh, some kind of a reseller that may or may not have really known the value of this board because I, I really enjoy playing on this board it's a solid solid board it's uh, it's kind of like my favorite sort of mid-range board. It's heavy. The uh, back side is all felt, and I've shown you guys this board before, relatively thick, and I believe, I have not broken this board apart to be certain, I believe it's wood. It's not composite wood because uh, 
the, just the, the, the weight overall of the board. I think this is sort of a solid wood board. It's not an end grain board, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but it is a solid wood board. You can purchase this uh, on Royal Chess Mall. I'll send you guys a link below, so check them out. Uh, I think they're running a sale right now, so you could get it probably under 200 but just double check. They have this in Golden Rosewood and Maple, like you see here. Golden Rosewood is a really nice sort of a neutral color that goes well with a lot of chess pieces out there. You can also, I think, get it in more like a, a brown reddish uh, Bud Rosewood and Maple, and that'll be a little bit more like for people that want a little bit of a contrastier board. Some people do like the board that has more contrast to them. But this board, in my opinion, when I saw it on sale, I I didn't I didn't even think for a second. I, I emailed and I said, is this still available? I think I bought it for like 40 bucks or something. I've not mentioned to you guys before. Best board, best purchase that I've got as far as chess boards is this one right here. Plays well, it's solid, and so when the board is solid like this, it's got a good resonating feel. Not that you're gonna be doing this. You're, I mean, we're not doing music to it, but uh, it's still solid, very solid. Uh, you could tell that this type of board has been made to, to really last. And I think you can get this on Royal Chess Mall. I believe you can also pick up one of these on Chess Bazaar. I'm not really sure if they still sell them, but I'll send you guys a link. Anyways, uh, yeah. With this board over time uh, warp, I have not noticed this board warping. Uh, the reseller that I bought this from, he had uh, this board stored in the garage where the temperature changes fluctuate a lot more readily than they do inside. And I don't know how long he's had it stored, but potentially could be a year, maybe, maybe less, I don't know. And I don't see any issues. I don't see any cracks. I don't see any changes in the surface. I don't really see any warping. So that's good to know, okay? Lastly, I want to briefly mention uh, wooden chess boards that are known as end grain chess boards. Uh, they're gonna be made a little bit different than the wooden chess board that I showed you guys just now. End grain is taken by, I believe, taking a long piece of wood, shaping it into a square, and then basically cutting it and using those little squares and then basically like holding them and turning them and then fusing these little blocks together. The wood is, uh, I'm not really sure, but I don't think the wood, the wood would probably need to be stained, but they do take separate pieces of wood and basically they uh, bring the little squares together and glue them in. And grain boards are gonna be a little bit more expensive. You'd expect to pay like three, $400 for an end grain board, sometimes more. They're probably gonna be a little bit heavier. Some of those boards actually can be played on both sides. Um, and I've been meaning to get one of those, but I just haven't really found the best board. I've been looking at some of the original Droiki 2.25 boards, and I was hoping that there'd be people out there selling them used, but uh, those boards are kind of more or less like collectible items. So, and you'd still expect to pay over 300 for a 2.25 Droiki and grain board. Uh, there's some people out there that I've seen that actually make their own boards at home, like woodworking shops and stuff that uh, have I have seen made some really, really nice boards, but once again, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive. Would those boards be likely to warp? Quite honestly, I wouldn't know since I haven't had those boards. But like I said, if you have had any experiences with warping of your boards, please be sure to comment below and kind of start a discussion and you know, we'll sort of uh, see if, if people can share their own experiences. And you know, that's what it's all about, the social media thing. But uh, I'm gonna leave you with, with an idea that, uh, I mean, Warping uh, of the wood and it's in itself. I would believe would be more significant in situations perhaps other than, other than chess like let's say uh, a billiard table Okay, so an inexpensive billiard table will have a piece of wood that is felted and That will be the surface of the table where the billiard balls will be traveling So you need that surface to be pristinely flat completely flat on all surfaces and every little dimension even in the corners uh, my parents, they have an, um, an inexpensive billiard table that over time started warping a little bit. And so what we'll notice is most of the time you can play just fine. But if you are sending the ball right down the side of the board, then what, what will happen is if you, especially if you send it kind of low energy, sort of slower, what will happen is you'll notice that as it, it keeps going, eventually it'll start to veer off a little bit. And that veer off could potentially mean, you know, a difference between winning and losing a game. 
it's not noticeable to where it's annoying, but even that little bit microscopic uh, uh, changes in the board surface could be noticeable in that case. If you're playing on a board, on a chess board that's not super big, and it's not like you're playing billiard balls on top where, where the surface needs to be so pristinely flat, uh, you know, your pieces are not likely to slide if you have a slight bending, but I could see how it, it maybe it could cast a light a certain way differently and it could be noticeable to you. And of course, if you paid like $400 for a board, you don't want it to be uh, warping over time. Neither, n n none of us would. So, uh, but I, I would say that, like I said, chess may not necessarily be a game that requires that surface to be absolutely flat as opposed to some other, you know, some other places. But I still feel like, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be people out there probably that have uh, encountered it. So anyways, thank you for dropping by as usual. It was always great to share with you guys this stuff and, uh, uh, be sure to stay safe, play some games, let me know what you think about this topic, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Subscribe.